It's an honor and a privilege to be back uh, with Yeshiva HaKotel's Vayichan program. Um, I want to thank uh, Rabbi Tarragon and the staff at Yeshiva HaKotel. Um, I want to speak about um, the final words of the Haftarah of, of Tisha B'Av. And the words from Yirmiyahu and Perik Tess. And after a heartbreaking Haftarah, um, you know, Yirmiyahu predicted the, the Khurban, the destruction. He saw it coming. You know, I, I, I think of it in these terms now with COVID. You know, the folks who warned about certain things coming and were ignored. Imagine the frustration that they feel when they see everything unfolding just the way they said and their advice wasn't followed. And, and Yermio saw it coming. He warned everybody. He was not always treated with the greatest respect for that. And that's putting it mildly. And after a, a sad portion discussing the, the Khurban and everything, he says as follows. He ends the Haftarah. Um, he says, Ali is halal chacham b'chachmasai. A person shouldn't, a wise man shouldn't praise himself with his wisdom. Ali is halal giba a strong person, a physically strong person shouldn't talk about his strength. Ali is halal asher b'ashra. Don't praise yourself for your wealth. Ki im b'zois yis halal hamas halal. What what is worthy? What is praiseworthy? What should you be praised? Uh, you know, haskel v'yadaya I see. Become wise. Haskel from seichel v'yadaya I see. That as his wisdom. Get to know me. Get to know me, Kiani Hashem, I am Hashem, Isa Chesed, Mishpat Utstaka Ba'aretz. I do Chesed, kindness, Mishpat, justice, uh, Utstaka, and charity, Ba'aretz in this world, Kiba Elacha Fasti Hashem. That's what I really want. And it, it seems just just from this expression, um, uh, choosing these words, obviously we're chosen carefully, that there's an expectation level that we should understand Hashem. Don't talk about stuff, right? Don't talk about your strength and your wisdom and your and, and your wealth. Talk about, get to know me. Get to know me, Hashem says. Now, on the surface, um, how are we supposed to know Hashem? What kind of expectation is there? How honestly, we really expect it to get to know Hashem? You know, if we get to know a good friend that we spend the whole life with, we're lucky to really understand somebody. How are we expected to know Hashem? We can't see Him. You know, we hope that we have some understanding, but Haskel v'yadoya, I see. What, what's that expression? In fact, you know, one of my, one of my Talmidim, uh, I always tried to create the environment in my classrooms where the kids were able to ask, you know, whatever was on their minds. And when you have that, if you're fortunate enough to create that, you get some really interesting conversations. And one of my Talmidim, one of my students once asked me, hey, we were learning Parshish Kedoshim at the time, and it, it says... Kedoshim Tihu Hashem says, uh, God speaking, you should be holy, Ki Kaddish and Hashem, because I'm holy. So a kid raises his hand, he says, hey, Rebbe, I told eighth graders, he says, hey, Rebbe, he's God, I'm a 13-year-old, you know, how am I supposed to, well, what kind of, I, I should be holy because he's holy, he's God. So, in a nutshell, I answered him that Hashem wants us to be godly. Um, I actually, you know, kids, you got to talk to them in the language, Haskell you have to get to know them. So, you know, I told him, I'm dating myself, uh, Michael Jordan was playing basketball at the time. He was a superstar in basketball at the time. And so I told him, I said, you know, when I see you out in the playground and, you know, you're, you're playing basketball, this kid is a very good ball player. So I said, you know, when you say five, four, three, two, one, Michael takes the shot. I said, you don't say Rebbe took a shot. You know, you say Michael Jordan because you're striving. You know, you're not going to be Michael Jordan, but you strive for it. So it means you should strive for greatness. But the, in essence, that's the question the child is, was asking is really the question here. Well, how are we supposed to understand Hashem? Well, what's it really? So I, I, I'd like to take you through this and, and, and offer some, some thoughts on it. And the backstory here and another part of this is the whole issue of, of what the message of the Nevi'im are. And we see these words that, that Yirmiyahu ends with. Uh, tzedakah, chesed, mishpat, is, is Navi speak for being kind to widows, to orphans, to people who are weaker. And in fact, we find that, that surprisingly, uh, um, Yishayahu and Yermiyahu bring up the issue of karbanas quite often. That who needs your sacrifices, uh, Yishayahu says, uh, speaking in the name of Hashem. I don't need your sacrifices. In fact, some very harsh language. Uh, listed there, you're, I'm repulsed by your sacrifices, don't bother coming to the base of Mikdash, who needs you there? 
Um, and he, what was he, what, what's the backstory here? Is Hashem was saying, Shiftu Yasam, Rivu Almana, I want you to be kind, I want you to be charitable, I want you to do justice. And if you do that, Kabbalah are fine. But if not, it's, it's, it seems to be particularly offensive if you're doing mitzvahs and you're not being a mensch and you're not doing the, 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 what we call in today's vernacular social justice. But it means watching out for people who are weak. And this is a theme throughout uh, the, the things related to the Chorban. Um, so I, I want to talk about first about being understood. And you know, um, Hashem is Hashem, but in, on, on a human level, to, to the extent that we can understand, we all know what it feels like when somebody understands us, our essence, our core, who we are, rather than the stuff. Um, when people call me for shidduch information, to, to ask for shidduch information, um, or other things like that, when they ask me, you know, for a particular, for a reason, for a job, so I said, you know, I, I, I say, describe, you can des describe, I'll describe it to you, but I'm not, any description does not include a, a dress or what they do for a living. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, a, I'll talk about the core of the person. I tell people, do you want to describe yourself to me? So they say, well, no la no clothing and no work. I want to know who you are. And and sometimes, you know, when I was a, a, a principal of yeshiva, I had this, supposed to be principal of yeshiva for 22 years, um, I started giving my, my talks at the bar mitzvahs um, my speeches at the children's, my students' bar mitzvahs. Um, it was 20 something years ago, 25 years ago. I started the speeches at uh, seven minutes. I would cap myself at seven minutes. And as technology became more ubiquitous and, and I, attention spans were dropping all over the place, and my competition got better. So, you know, it wasn't, uh, I was competing with a, sm a smartphone eventually. And so I just dropped it to, to, you know, six, five. Ultimately, I stopped at three. I never speak to a captive, a captive audience uh, that didn't come to hear me. In other words, I'm just speaking at a simcha or something. I never, I never speak more than three minutes. But during that time, one of my goals were I wanted to say something not generic. I, I would say something about the Rav Mitzvah boy, and I would, like, tick it off in my mind. You know, say Mazel Tov, a short Torah thought wish the grandparents and the parents mazel tov and then look the kid in the eye and say you know something about yitzi you know i never see him in the playground not you know making other kids feel good or, or some other thing that you say that's unique and i wanted the child when he hears it to say rebbe understands me rebbe knows me rebbe gets me and and it's it's a wonderful feeling to to feel this way you know to to on a very personal level to incidents with me um, as I was preparing for this talk that, that stuck out at me. Um, our daughter, Fagy, um, lives in Baltimore. We were Fagy Loeb. She was, uh, we were in the house for, for my birthday during the summer and she made, she made me a cake and she, um, the, the fellow who was making the cake in the store said, uh, what are your father's hobbies? So she said, he loved, loves to golf. So the guy started to make a, an image of golfing, of, of somebody swinging a golf club. And then she said, she said, golf is what my father does. It's not who he is. Have a, a picture of him golfing with a grandchild or a child. That's who he is. And like, that was it. You could see <laughs> it was very meaningful to me because I would like to think that that's, who I am, and you know, as well, I was in, another thing comes to mind. You know, uh, Rabbi, my dear friend, Rabbi uh, Jonathan, Rabbi Doctor Jonathan Jonathan Schwartz. He's a, a rabbi in Hillside, New Jersey, and I was a scholar in residence there. And you know, to be perfectly candid, you know, being introduced when you're called upon to speak is like kind of like being at your own funeral. You know, you listen to them. <laughs> Some people read off the you know the bio, or they say nice things. I, I appreciate it. It's very kind. I appreciate all of it, but every once in a while you get introduced and you say, this guy gets it. And it's such a different feeling. And so what happened was, he, his talk at the time was, you know, he got up there and he said that the people in the Gemara, people in the Gemara usually we have a, a code, there's a Rebbe, 
uh, Rabban Gamliel or Rebbe or, or Rav. Um, he said there was some, uh, Rabbi Schwartz said that introducing the Shabbos uh, from the pulpit talk, he said that there's a Vidrasha, he said that there's a, a few people in the Gemara are referred to by their first name Shammai, Hillel, Abaya, Rava. So he offered some thoughts that some of the Farshim say, and he said that he, he felt that part of it was a compliment that they were so approachable. That despite, you know, despite who they were, they were approachable. People were comfortable calling them by their first name. So he said, I'd like to, I said, I can tell you anything about Rabbi Horowitz. I'm going to introduce you to Yankee, the way he picks up the phone. And he says, he's just Yankee. It's fine. And, you know, it, I felt great about it. I think that this is what Yermio is really speaking about. And, and it's, it's an understanding. It's almost, if you read the words of, of Yermiyahu and Yeshayahu around these subjects, when it talks about karbanas and when it talks about charity and chesed and kindness, what he ends with, um, it, you almost hear the frustration. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? Don't you get it? Understand me, but our question still remains. How are you supposed to understand Hashem? How can my 13-year-old's question, my, my student's question, how can I, he's God, I'm a 13-year-old. So here's my, here's my thought. Um, I hope you find it meaningful. It was meaningful when I thought of it. You know, think back to your school days. Um, you, you walked into class the first day and you had a new teacher, a new Rebbe, a new Mora, and you look around, you, you're getting to know each other. Uh, and what are the things that you look for? You're really looking to see when you measure them up, you know, you look, what pleases them? What do they compliment? What gets them upset? Uh, what are their expectations of you? And you start like kind of feeling each other out to understand what makes this person tick. Um, we do this when we have job interviews, when we're working for a new boss um, in our in our lives when we're dating when we're you know uh, um, any social emotional issue when we're dealing with other people that's what we what, think about dating right you're dating <laughs> I tell people you know you want to know I, I really say you know what when you want to people will say what should I look for when I'm dating so I say uh, so um, you know look for the, the, I was doing a one time I was doing a class out in the west coast with uh, where I was speaking in a high school and but there was a question and answer session and one of the girls asked, so what should we look for when we're dating? So I said, look, when you're dating, look look for, um, ask them, uh, look, try to find out what inspires them, what they get upset about, and see how they treat, I tell them, look how they treat the waiter and the parking lot attendant. Because you're on a date, they will, everybody will treat you well. Um, look how they behave with people that they don't necessarily feel that they need to impress. Um, so, judging by that measure, this is what I'd like to suggest Yumiyo is speaking about. Um, so, what start from the beginning of Beratius and, and look through what brought about, um, I don't like to word, use the word anger, but what brought about Hashem's uh, Midas Hadin? What brought about a, a, a judgment or destruction to the world? And it might, you know, if you think about it this way, um, and the thought just came to me a little a while ago, but let's see what did not bring up, just going chronologically from the beginning of the Torah, uh, look what did not bring about destruction. The two main uh, uh, times of destruction were the Mabel, the flood, in the time of Nayach, and the destruction of Sedan. Those are the two things that brought about Midas um, Hadin that brought about a, a sense of destruction. But look what Hashem passed on and didn't destroy. So think about this, okay? So disobeying the direct order, which Hashem gave to Adam and Chava, and they disobeyed the very first, immediately, very shortly after they were created, they disobeyed a direct order. That did not bring about destruction. From time to time, I'll tell this to a parent, and they say, my kids never listen to me. <laughs> I say, you know, <laughs> welcome to the world. I'm not saying, you should, of course, you should do things about it, but don't bring destruction, you know, talk about it. But that did not bring about that, okay? Well, so that didn't bring it. By the Mabel, it's fascinating. It says the Torah lists three Averis. It says, it says, uh, uh, excuse me, right, Hashem's Ketzkobazel, uh, um, 
Hashem said that there were three Averis, that there were there was Avodizara, um, they were immoral, Gili Arayas, and and stealing. Okay, the Torah lists the the, the three Averis there. Um, but when it says the the and the Gzardin, Ketzka Basabal of Naikibal Mala Arts Hamas Nehem. The thing that Hashem uh, notes is that the world I'm going to destroy Sadaim because of stealing. That means the other two didn't trigger destruction, which were Avodazara, idolatry, which is, you know, trying to replace Hashem, right, with a lahavdal with an idol, and 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 Gilearai is a morality which and those are two out of three things that we have to give our lives for, and that didn't trigger the destruction. Yet Stealing, which is only a loss, I say, which is a, certainly a lower punishment, and we would think is much lower in the in the totem pole, um, is 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 listed. And it's interesting. We have a, a Geneva and Gazela. We have two types of stealing. Geneva is a thief in the middle of the night. Gazela is armed robbery. It says specifically Gezel. Um, okay, so Gazela does trigger destruction, and. Avodazara Gilei Rais and my Adam Chava disobeying a direct order doesn't do it. Now, for the for the perhaps the most perplexing thing, and you know what else doesn't trigger um, destruction? Trying to kill God. The people the the the, the Migdal Bavel right? It says the people got together, and they at the end of Pashas Noach it says that they got together and they said let's build up a tower and we'll do war with God. So they wanted to kill. Hashem, no destruction. Hashem separates them, and then Sudan comes along, and there's destruction. Um, so here's here's how here's my suggest here's, here's how I would like to suggest. I'd like to offer a, a marshal, an analogy that might help understand this perplexing value system that Hashem seems to have, where huge things. Again, disobeying a direct order, avodazara, idolatry, morality, trying to kill God, none of these things trigger, but other things do. So the analogy I'd like to give is, imagine a, a couple has, they have a, a few, pre, uh, a couple of teenage kids, and they have a six-year-old. Okay, so they have uh, two, they have a 15-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a six, seven-year-old child, okay? So the parents sit down with the kids, with the two, with the older kids. And they say, listen, you know, you guys are getting into your teenage years. Um, we're going to have stuff. You know, you're going to, teenagers go, you know, you're going to rebel. You're going to you're gonna disobey orders that we have. We're going to have things going on because that's the way of the world. The adolescence is a, is a phase. Um, we'll talk about it. Whatever happens, we love you. We're going to discipline you from time to time. We're going to have some real talks about it. I want you to be comfortable talking to us about what's going on in your life. But we'll talk about it. We're family. But if we take a babysitter and, and you know, the two of us go out one night and we take a babysitter and you beat up your little sister, then we're not a family. Then we're not a family. So all the other stuff we're not, gonna, we're not happy about, we'll deal with. But if you do that, we're not a family anymore. And then... Then we're going to have a real talk. Then there's going to be some real consequences. I'd like to humbly suggest that this is what Yirmiyah was referring to. And it, this would explain the the schar v'aynish, the reward and the punishment. The things that people... Hashem created us with free will. Hashem gave us free choice. Hashem didn't make us robots. Hashem didn't make us angels. Hashem made us with weaknesses. And... So the things that we do, we deal with. But if there's if there's a bullying, if there's tormenting weak people, if the strong if the if the strong eat the weak, and and there's that sense of of injustice, and and abuse, and and being brutal to people who can't defend themselves, then Hashem says that's destruction comes. And, and I, I also, I think really that the, the destruction is it's sort of like an etch-a-sketch that I've, not, not for now, 
you can go on my YouTube uh, page. I, I had a few Tishbuf talks about this specific that that Gullus is not necessarily a punishment, but rather a reset, like a etch a sketch. You got what Hashem says, like the Mabel, we have to start again. You can go on my YouTube page, it's a uh, uh, channel, it's Yaakov Horowitz. I have a few talks about that specifically. But um, I think that's what the Navi keeps talking about. Um, Haskel fi yadoya, I see. Hashem says, look at what I did. Look at what I did. Don't you get it? Look at how I treated you, humans. Some things I, de- I looked away from, but when there's that sort of, of, of bullying and hurting weak people, I, that, that, that brings destruction. And that's what the Navi's saying. I'd like to suggest, what, what were Karbanas? And I, I, Karbanas have the place. It's a big mitzvah. We daven all the time. Hashem should be to go. We should come back to Yerushalayim and bring Karbanas. Karbanas is a big deal. But Karbanas is a physical thing. It's, it's you know, it's, we, we I think that there are two Mizbechas. There was Mizbech and the Chayshas, the, the Mizbech HaOyla, the, the big Mizbech, where animal sacrifices were brought on, and it was, it was filled with earth, which is also Gashmias, you know, physical things. That's another talk you can look at my YouTube page about. The, 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 all of those were physical things, and Hashem says, "Look, I get it. If in the you know giving a carbon at the time, uh, uh, bringing a carbon was like taking a car off your driveway and donating it to the local shul. It's a wonderful thing. If your currency is gashmi, it's is physical things. It's beautiful. So take those physical things and bring it to Hashem. But the 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 mizbeach inside, the mizbeach inside the the beis hamikdash and the and the ayam and the and the kaddish kaddish and the ayamayit. Excuse me." Was mizbeach haktiris? It was incense. It was it was very small. It was hollow. It wasn't filled with earth, and and what was brought upon it wasn't physical. It was like an incense. You know, smell is the closest thing to a spiritual thing. There's no physical. You can't touch anything there. And I think the message there also is that's all beautiful. Karbanas is great, but inside, away from the crowd, it, it was hollow. You know, I think David Melech when he says I made a, a place for you in my heart. That's the real avayda of becoming a better person, of trying to perfect the imperfections in ourselves, and and I, I think that that this is what the this is what the navi is referring to. Hashem says, I, I brought you to Mitzrayim, I took you out of Mitzrayim because I want you to to remember what it was like to 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 be oppressed and to be weak, and and that's why we keep saying zechel itzias Mitzrayim. And and this is this is supposed to be part of our DNA, that that we're we're kind and charitable, uh, stucco, mishpat, chesed. And if you look at the three things, I think it's very symmetrical because the things that 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 Yirmiyahu says we sh- in the name of Hashem that we should not praise ourselves with our physical things. Even wisdom is is the least of the three, but the, the, your, your wealth and your strength is all physical, and even wisdom to some degree. But you want to praise yourself. Haskell Vyadaya is to get to know me if you're charitable and you're kind and you have the ability to to you know be indifferent or chas shalom worse to someone who's weak. Um, and, and you don't do it because you have the right moral compass. Hashem. And Hashem says, Look, look at what I did, look at what I did. I left you breadcrumbs. Of course you can't see me, Hashem says. Of course you can't see me, but get you can get to know me. How? Look at what I did. Look at how I did it. And if you look, in fact, that's why I believe Gezel, it says that, that the Mabel was brought about. Gezel wasn't stealing like a gun in the middle of the night. It's armed robbery. You come with a baseball bat. You come with a gun. You take you take away strength, takes away but the strong, take away from the weak. And I found it fascinating. If you look at the, if you analyze the, the, the story of Sadaim, it says that Hashem says, Erdun of Era, let me go down and look. And see what's going on in this in in the world here. Hakitza akasa haboa elai. I want to hear the cries. I hear cries. Hashem says, I want to go down and see if if they're redeemable or if they're worthy of destruction. I found it fascinating. Uh, Rashi first translates the the the, 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 the literal translation that hakitza akasa is in the feminine. Um, so Rashi says shel medina. It's the cries of the country. And um, in the feminine, you say uh, her navy, her army. You, we refer to countries in the feminine, and and that's why 
And that would explain Hashem heard the cries of the city. Then Rashi quotes a medrash, Haketzah Akasa, they were the cries of a girl who didn't listen to the rules of the elders, of the village elders. And she was tortured a horrible death. This pure, innocent child that took in a guest against the wishes of the, of the elders, um, she was tortured. And now, generally, it, you know, if you're a student of Rashi and you, you look at this beautiful commentary that Rashi offers, um, usually Rashi doesn't, Rashi usually sticks with Pashupshat, simple explanations. And he only goes to a second interpretation if it's add something or the first one wasn't that clear. I would humbly like to suggest that this is what Rashi was saying I heard the cries of the, of the city, that's generally speaking. But if we take it to understand that hashchaset, that destruction comes because when and if, chas v'shalom, the strong abuse the weak, and folks, this is so relevant in our times, this is why Hashem wants, that's why it's so imperative that we stand with, with people who are abused, abuse victims, and stand against abusers. Abusers are usually powerful and well-connected. And when we, we move over and we stand with all the research shows, with bullying and abuse, it, you know when it stops? When the silent majority goes over and stands with the victim. Then it ends. And that's, I, I believe, this is what... Um, Yermio keeps and Yeshayo keeps speaking about when they say, I don't need your karbanas, I don't need the chutzanias. It's nice if you do it, but do tztaka, mishpat, chesed, be kind to the weak, do what we have to. In, in these times, in, in the three weeks and the nine days on Tisha B'Av, I, I, something we should reflect about what we could do to bring about um, the core values of what Hashem keeps speaking about. So Al Yishal Chacham B'Chachmasa V'Giba B'Gvurasa V'Asher B'Ashrei Ki Im B'Zayis Yishal Olam Yishal Olam This is praiseworthy. Haskel V'Yadoya Isi The the timeless call of our Nevi'im um, to to understand Hashem. I would suggest that these breadcrumbs are the way, um, but to understand Ki Be'Elech Efatzdin Omer Hashem. That's what Hashem wants of us. Um, so my bracha to all of myself to all of us is that we should we should reflect and think about Hashem's charge to us, about Haskell for Yadaya I see, about um, Chesed, uh, you know, that have uh, Yisrael to, lo to love one another, to overlook our imperfections, and um, try to make the world a better place, so we should be Zacha to Geula, to the redemption. Um, and may Hashem uh, dry our tears and, and um, rebuild the base of Mikdash, Meher of Yemenu. Thank you. Oh, come, you're a king, you're a king,